Good morning. Welcome to worship here at Kirkwood Church. We are overjoyed to have you with us this morning. If you are tuning in for the first time or you're new to our community and you would like to know more about us, we would be happy to interact with you on our Facebook page, or you can send us an email directly. You can reach me at hope at kpcbradenton.org. For everybody this morning, this is a communion Sunday, and I would invite you to make sure that you have a piece of bread, cup of juice, or a cup of wine to be able to join us and participate in the Lord's Supper when we get to that in the service this morning. Please make sure that you are getting our weekly e-blasts. They contain all the information that you need to know for discipleship and fellowship, and this week especially mission, ways that you can serve God's church and this community here locally and abroad. Please make sure that you're checking that out. And if you want to be included in that list, just send us an email at office at kpcbradenton.org. I know that many of you are excited to hear about our reopening plans, and my friends, that is going to happen on July the 5th. We will be here physically together in the same place. There will be services at 8.30 and 10.30 a.m., and all the details about that will be coming out in the next couple of weeks. But what I want you to know, and what I want you to remember and hold in your heart, is that amongst all of the surveys and all of the opinions of everyone in the church, we have one highest value that we can all agree on. And that value is that we want to be in relationship with God and with one another. And so every decision that we make will be based on that highest value of relationship, of loving one another so much that we will compromise we will accommodate, we will work together and sacrifice so that we can be together and worship the Lord. I want to thank all of you who have given so faithfully and have made so many of the ministries of this congregation possible. In May, we were able to fulfill all of our commitments to our mission partners, both here locally, nationally, and globally. But I also have to tell you that our expenses for the month of May exceeded our income by $5,000. And that's pretty normal for this time of year, except that this is not a normal year. And so this is the time to be generous, to give faithfully. If you have been blessed by this ministry anywhere in the world over the last three months, we hope that you will take a moment and give a gift that helps us reach the world for Jesus Christ. You can do that by going to our website at www.kpcbradenton.org give. My friends, I will be out of the office from June 10th to June 24th. I need to step away to get some rest, to be renewed, ready to go for our reopening. But I don't want you to worry. We have faithful elders, a Kirkwood Cares team, and our staff will be here on site. If you have an emergency, please don't hesitate to reach out. We as the church family are here to care for and with one another. And because we are here to worship this morning, and we want that focus to be on the Lord, I want to make sure that we remove any distractions. And I know what the distraction might be this morning. Some of you are looking at me and you're asking yourself, did Pastor Hope cut her hair? The answer is yes. And your next question is, I wonder how much she cut off. Well, it was 12 inches of hair. My friends, having moved, removed that distraction, let us turn our hearts, our minds, our souls to worship. Let us worship the Lord. Beloved of God, let us call one another to worship. In the midst of the world's chaos, come to this place and find peace. 
When your mind is overwhelmed with what you see, come to this place and find hope. If your heart is heavy with fear, with worry, with sorrow, come to this place and find strength. As you long for community in a world that is torn apart, come to this place and find love. Come, people of God, and in this place, in this moment, find peace, hope, strength, and love as we worship and pray together. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. That saved a wretch like me I once was lost But now I'm found Was blind but now I see chains my chains are gone i've been set free my god my savior has ransomed me and like a flood his mercy reigns unending love amazing grace
Scripture reading this morning is a psalm of lament. It is Psalm 77. Listen now for the word of the Lord. I cry aloud to God, aloud to God that he may hear me. In the day of my trouble, I seek the Lord. In the night, my hand is stretched out without wearying. My soul refuses to be comforted. I think of God and I moan. I meditate and my spirit faints. You keep my eyelids from closing. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I consider the days of old and remember the years of long ago. I commune with my heart in the night. I meditate and search my spirit. Will the Lord spurn forever and never again be favorable? Has his steadfast love ceased forever? Are his promises in an end for all time? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he in anger shut up his compassion? And I say, it is my grief that the right hand of the Most High has changed. I will call to mind the deeds of the Lord. I will remember your wonders of old. I will meditate on all your work and muse on your mighty deeds. Your way, O God, is holy. What God is so great as our God? You are the God who works wonders. You have displayed your might among the peoples. With your strong arm, you redeemed your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. When the waters saw you, O God, when the waters saw you, they were afraid. The very deep trembled. The clouds poured out water. The skies thundered. Your arrows flashed on every side. The crash of your thunder was in the whirlwind. Your lightning lit up the world. The earth trembled and shook. Your way was through the sea, your path through the mighty waters. Yet your footprints were unseen. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Church, would you join me in prayer as we prepare our hearts to study the word together? Gracious God, thank you for what we are trusting to be a good opportunity. And we pray that we can be trusted to do something good with it. In your name, amen. A whole lot of us are finding ourselves wide awake in the middle of the night these days, unable to sleep, 
restless, our minds throbbing in pain, our souls aching with heartbreak. So many of you have written me letters painstakingly pouring out your sorrow, your confusion, your frustration with what is happening in the world and wondering where is the Spirit of God in all of this. A few nights ago, I too found myself awake reviewing the last 12 weeks that started with a worldwide pandemic and continues to rage on with a national crisis of racism at the epicenter. And there in that dark night, literally, and also of the soul, I landed on an article from the Miami Herald, whose headline read, Giant Toxic Toads Come Out in South Florida as Heavy Rains Set the Mood for Breeding. I wanted to laugh, church. I wanted to just roll my eyes and roll over and go back to bed, but instead I found myself weeping. It was as if I was already drowning. And this additional weight, no matter how seemingly small and insignificant, was just enough to push my head underwater. Giant toxic toads! In a normal season, that seems like something out of a sci-fi movie. But all of us are long past the illusion that these are normal days. These are days of both an invisible enemy and a very visible division of humanity. This is best illustrated in the riots where participants are still wearing masks. We are a nation, a people who are physically, emotionally, and spiritually exhausted. And the hits just keep on coming. That's why giant toxic toads are just enough to push us over the edge of sanity. Right on time for the arrival of hurricane season here in Florida. As I have wrestled with these days, as I try faithfully to respond to your questions about what we should do now, I have found myself returning to the Old Testament word, Selah. You'll see the word Selah pretty frequently in the Psalms. It is found in the Psalm that we are studying together this morning. A Selah is a holy pause. It's a time out. It's a moment where the action stops long enough to let God in. The idea of pausing does not sit well with many of us. We want to act. We want to fix Mostly, if we're honest, we just want to move on and live our lives undisturbed by things that inconvenience us and make us uncomfortable. And I think that what has made this season of life so frustrating is that it has been a season. A season that we're in the middle of and a season that we're not sure is going to end very soon. All of us have the patience to be disturbed and frustrated for a little while, you know, like a day or, or maybe even a week. But all of this, this is, this is too much for too long. And we don't like it. And we want to move past it. But that option's not on the table right now. We can't just magically teleport to another dimension We are going to have to live through this. And so we can start with a holy pause, a Selah. We can't stop COVID, the rioting across the country. We can't even stop toxic toads. But we can stop ourselves long enough to let ourselves lament for a little while with God before we keep pushing 
to fix it all so that we don't have to be uncomfortable anymore. There is value in lament. Lament is a uniquely Christian way of facing our sorrows and heartbreak. It's more than just a venting of emotion. Lament talks to God about pain. And it has a unique purpose. Trust. It is a divinely given invitation to pour out our fears, frustrations, and sorrows for the purpose of helping us to renew our confidence in God. We want to be careful about how we understand lament. Lament is not a temper tantrum, and it's not necessarily something that happens quickly with a burst of energy and then subsides. The book of Job shows us that lament is not wrapped up in a nice, neat, tidy package in a day or two, which is good because with everything that we're having to face right now, we are going to need some time to lament. If you have ever had the slightest doubt about the relevance and the timeliness of scriptures, consider Psalm 77, a psalm of lament. I cry aloud to God, aloud to God so that he may hear me. In the day of my trouble, I seek the Lord. In the night, my hand is stretching out without wearying. My soul refuses to be comforted. I think of God and I moan, I meditate, and my spirit faints. Consider, church. How many of you have shared how you have cried out to God in these days? And how there has been such struggle in that crying out because the cries have not been immediately resolved. For months now, we have been dealing with restless souls and faint spirits. Every piece of good news seems to get quickly shattered by worsening events. I think of all of those small business owners who were hanging on by their fingernails to survive those weeks in quarantine only to reopen their doors and to have their stores completely destroyed by looters. But then we try to balance that with families who have been unable to get into nursing homes to see their loved ones and the infinite grief and fear that so many of our black brothers and sisters are feeling and the struggle of our white brothers and sisters trying to figure out what their role and their response should be in the middle of it. No wonder the psalmist pours out, you keep my eyelids from closing I am so troubled that I cannot speak. God is doing something in this verse. He is keeping our eyelids from closing. Our hearts are disturbed to the point where we can't sleep and we can't find the words to articulate what's going on in and all around us. Do you feel that? Do you feel that, brothers and sisters, that that overwhelming sense of loss and disturbance? That the power of the Holy Spirit has troubled the waters and we are being called to attention in our restlessness. Our eyelids can't close because we need to see. And we can't turn away just because it is uncomfortable or disturbing. Your eyes being open is this opportunity for your heart to finally see the things that are breaking the heart of God. As the psalmist continues, we hear this longing for restoration, for justice and echoes of repentance. The psalmist goes back and forth between what he is doing and has done and naming his questions of the Lord. I consider the days of old and remember the years of long ago. 
I commune with my heart in the night. I meditate and search my spirit. Will the Lord spurn forever and never again be favorable? Has his steadfast love ceased forever? Are his promises at an end for all time? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he in anger shut up his compassion? And I say, it is my grief that the right hand of the Most High has changed. So we see in this psalm all of those things that have been swirling around all of us in the last few months. Grief, confusion, worry, fear, doubt, nostalgia, anxiety, and a giant mix of all of them, all at the same time, tangled together and closing in on us. This is that point in the Psalms where we have arrived at the toxic toads. It's that tipping point where just one more ounce of anything is going to do us in. So what do we do? We have wailed, we have wept, we have confessed, we may have even started that process of repentance. But still, we find ourselves wide awake in the middle of the night, unable to speak, our souls refusing to be comforted. How will we ever find rest? The psalmist writes, I will call to mind the deeds of the Lord. I will remember your wonders of old. I will meditate on all your work and muse on your mighty deeds. Your way, O oh God, is holy. What God is so great as our God? You are the God who works wonders. You have displayed your might among the peoples. With your strong arm, you redeemed your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. We can trust God because our God has a proven history of deliverance. In the face of seemingly insurmountable odds, our God has overcome. By the time that this psalm was written, God has delivered his people out of Egypt. He has brought them through floods and droughts and wars and unrest. He has released them time and time again. And he displayed his power in the face of rulers and kings and prophets and judges. Our God can be trusted because our God is faithful. When the waters saw you, O oh God, when the waters saw you, they were afraid. The very deep trembled. The clouds poured out water. The skies thunder. Your arrows flashed on every side. The crash of your thunder was in the whirlwind. Your lightnings lit up the world. The earth trembled and shook. Your way was through the sea, your path through the mighty waters, yet your footprints were unseen. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. What is so wonderful about the way that this psalm closes is that the psalmist uses God's provision of Moses and Aaron as an example of how God can be trusted even in the most difficult of circumstances and in the most unusual of ways. Moses and Aaron, of course, led the people out of Egypt and guided them towards the promised land. Moses, if you remember, started off as a baby in a basket, floated down the river into the arms of the Pharaoh's daughter. This is the child who would ultimately deliver his people. Aaron, his brother, is pulled from the fields to help 
Moses guide the people. He has no special training or even really any special skills, but God chose them, equipped them, led them to be leaders for his people, even when the people themselves were mired in such distress on the verge of hopelessness. I know that a year of pandemic and racial unrest and violence and potential hurricanes and murder hornets and toxic toads, it just all seems like too much for too long. And yet, our God can be trusted. We may be in one of the longest periods of distress that many of us have ever experienced. And yet, God's people endured 400 years of oppression and unrest when in the most unexpected and unlikely way, God provided for them and for us in his son, Jesus Christ. Our God does what he promises. And he promises to save his people. When it got hard, I mean really hard, hanging on a cross in pain hard, God still came through. And when it seemed impossible and that all was lost and that death had won the victory, God still came through in the empty tomb. Our God can be trusted. But until that day when Jesus returns, our broken world will be marked with tears. On those sleepless, weary nights when when the thought of toxic toads is the tiniest of pebbles that finally sinks in your soul, you can cry, you can weep, and when you have gotten out every last tear and you have poured yourself dry, Let there be a Selah moment, a holy pause where you give space for God to enter into your broken heart so that his Holy Spirit can surround you with his love, inviting you to trust in him. That trust is what transforms human tears into holy lament. And we need all of it. The pain, the tears, the trust, the salvation to finally arrive at that place of very great peace. To God be the glory. Amen. Brothers and sisters, as we come to the table this morning, I've been thinking a lot about what would be happening if we were here in the same place at the same time. And in the traditional service, we would be singing, come to the table. Come to the table of peace. Come to the table of love. This is God's table. It is not yours and mine. Come to the table of love. And I would be thinking about how in the chapel and in the well service, we come forward one by one. And in the traditional service, how we pass the plate. And what I love about that time is the opportunity that I get as your pastor to see your face, your smile, your family as we all participate in the grace of God. And so I think about Declan and Andre and Jack and Connie and Carolyn, face by face, person by person, sharing in the love and grace of God. So let's do that this morning. From wherever it is that we are, let us come to the table, knowing that we are loved and wanted.
Would you pray with me? Loving God, your people gather in heart and in spirit, asking you to be with each one of us this morning. Grateful for the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup, recognizing the sacrifice of your son, Jesus Christ. Equip us, sustain us for the work that we have together and for that moment when we will see each other face to face. In your name we pray, amen. On the night of his arrest, Jesus took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant It is sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim my death until I come again. And brothers and sisters, he is coming again. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take, eat, be fed. The body of Christ broken for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Lord Jesus, give your people power. Give us strength. Give us courage. Give us love. For one another, for you, and for the world. As we share in this bread and this cup, Lord, by the power of your Holy Spirit, May we be strengthened to go out into the world and to shine the light of Christ wherever it is that we may be. In your name we pray. Amen.
Church, there are times when, though we long to speak with God, we have run out of our own words. And our hearts are so heavy that we find it difficult to express all that we want to say. This is a part of the lament that we just studied together. This morning, I'm going to invite you to share in a Welsh prayer with me. And as we do so, we lift up the concerns, the heartaches, the heartbreak of all in our congregation and all who are sharing in worship with us this morning. Let us pray together. Grant us, O God, your protection, and in your protection, strength, and in strength, understanding, and in understanding, knowledge, and in knowledge, the knowledge of justice, and in the knowledge of justice, the love of justice, and in that love, the love of existence. And in that love of existence, the love of God, God and all goodness. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who taught his people to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. My friends, the sleepless nights are not over. The tears will continue to fall. And when they do, let them flow with purpose. Let them lead you to that Selah moment of letting God enter in and reminding you once again that even in a world of chaos, he can be trusted. The Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you. Clean hands, pure hearts, be the church. Amen. Water you turn into wine Open the eyes of the blind There's no one like you None like you Into the darkness you shine Out of the ashes we rise There's no Our God is stronger God you are higher than any other Our God is healer Awesome and power Our God Our God Into the darkness you shine As we rise, there's no one like you, none like you. Our God, our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome and power. Turn!
Healer, awesome power. 